Jacob, I'm Yuri, and we're going for a drive. Two thousand eighteen Matsuta Mazda Mazda Six Turbo Signature Trim. That's the one everybody wanted, right? Yeah, you guys were begging us to review this in the comments for the last year, so here you go. So how do you like it? It drives really well. How about everything else? There's a lot of good, there's a lot of not so good. Okay, so let's dig into it. What do you want to start with? I'd like to start with the good, because I'm driving. Okay. And I'm actually enjoying my time driving the car. Since this is a turbo, yes. is it the fastest in its class? It has the most torque in its class. I don't know if it's the fastest. It feels pretty decent. I have no complaints about the power in this car, but it definitely has the most torque. What's the horsepower and torque? 250 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. But only 250 horsepower when you use premium gasoline. That's right. Otherwise, it's 227 horsepower, but still 310 pound-feet of torque, which is great. Because you don't use that horsepower until high up in the RPMs, and not many people use that. That's right. And you get maximum torque at 2,000 RPM, which is great because they've got a little valve thing for the turbo. <laughs> yeah, the turbo design is a little bit different than the traditional turbo. What I do like about the turbo engine is you can actually hear a little bit of turbo spool and a little bit of blow off. A little bit. Exactly. Yo, it's really nice out here. Thank you, Mazda, for flying us out to Kelowna to drive this. Like we said before, we love filming in British Columbia because we're sick <laughs> yeah. of the tall bushes Yo, shout out, Ontario. Shout out wearing t-shirts. I know you're wearing one underneath your sweater, but oh, it's so nice out here. It's very nice. Anyways, back to the car. The power is really good. The delivery is really good. It doesn't really feel turbo. It's very linear. Is that good or bad? Because I know you kind of like turbo lag sometimes. I like turbo lag for the fun aspect, but if you want more power, you don't want lag. People were basically begging Mazda to bring a turbo back into the Mazda 6 because there's no more Mazda Speed 6. And you know what the funny part is? What's that, Yuri? No manual transmission. Yeah. They got rid of the manual transmission for the turbo. So you got a two and a half liter turbo, but no more manuals. They got rid of the manual transmission for the 2.5 with cylinder deactivation. The only way you can get a manual transmission is in the US, not in Canada. On the base. On the base. But you wanna know why? Yeah, oh, I know why. It's people don't buy them. You people don't buy it. They got a chart they showed us. Hopefully I have it right here to show you. So you guys are the problem. Sorry to tell you that. <laughs> but also just buy a stick shift Miata. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And another thing we don't get. What? The estate or wagon. Oh yes. None of that in North America because nobody in North America buys wagons. Everyone begs for them, but no one actually buys them. So there's that too. We also had an opportunity to speak to the president of Mazda Canada about our pronunciation of Mazda. So here's what he said. Mazda. So is Mazda okay? Sure. But we say in Japanese, Mazda. Okay. That's the way, but we say in North Canada, it's Mazda. 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 Right. Okay. The only people in the world who say Mazda are from? From the US. They say Mazda. Everywhere else in the world, we say Mazda. Take that, comments. Turns out, I'm right. You're right. Everybody's right. Except the Americans. No. <laughs> yeah, they got their own way. Exactly. And then I had to ask him about Mazda Speed because the turbo's back, and here's what he had to say. Now that the turbo engine is back, is there a Mazda Speed in no. the future? Oh. <laughs> no more Mazda Speed. There you go. Straight from the president's mouth. I'd like to address the handling. Before you do that, what? We have to talk about the sport mode. So, what it does. Lower gear, higher RPM. In regular shifting D. When you're in the manual mode, it doesn't do anything. I didn't notice a single thing. And that's that. But the shifter is up for down, down for up. Which, which you is must cool. love. But I don't really love it because it doesn't have a good arm position to like put your hand on the shifter and rest your arm. True. The armrest is in a weird position. It's too far back. It's like the uh, Mazda 3 was where you're putting your elbow into your cup holder. Correct. So I do not like that. But we have paddle shifters. They're a little bit plasticky, but it's fine. However, the best part is that we have a six-speed auto, not CVT. Yes. Thank you. That's very Thank good. Thank you so much, Mazda. Okay, but one more thing. What? I was talking about this armrest here in the middle. Yes. The armrest on the right side, it tapers in, so there's like nowhere to put your elbow at the back. It's not good for people of your size for once, but for me, it's actually perfect to rest my elbow and hold the steering wheel for once. I disagree. Well, yeah, because you're shorter this time. So for once, I'm at the advantage for some reason. <laughs> okay, go go on about handling. Okay, handling. Wait, wait, before handling. No! Visor test. Oh, yeah, okay, fine. We haven't done this yet. Three, two, one. <sighs> Nothing. We got, we got an extension. Someone said this is for covering up the space between your rear view mirror. Yeah, well, it blocks it, so. It kind of I does. Don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Fail. They, yeah. Hard fail. Back to the handling for once. Handling, very good. 
best part of this whole car. It handles really, really well. The suspension firmness is perfect. The damping is perfect. I have no complaints about the handling. I actually love it. It's fun for this class. It handles better than the Camry XLE did. Yes, it does. I think similar to the Accord, but probably a bit better. I think just a bit better. But no CVT. Yeah, exactly. So that's, a, that's a win. Accord has the manual transmission. Yes, it does. The Camry doesn't. No, it doesn't. Looks, we have the best color ever. Soul Red Crystal. Soul Crystal Metallic? I don't know. It's that one. It's the new Soul Red, okay. and it looks amazing. Very hard to photograph because it looks really good in certain lights. The contours come out, but certain lights they don't, so it's kind of tricky. Exactly. But it's good. They it built was, a lot of cool body lines to work with that. It was trickier to film than the Miata for some reason. Looks wise, I think the best part about it. Wait, wait, wait. Three, two, one. Ready? Three, two, two one. Front fender end. flares. <laughs> okay, fender flares. We're starting with that. All right, go for Mazda it. Mazda sixes always have the coolest front fender flares. They do. And I always like that. The only thing is they don't really translate to the rest of the car. This is very true. I think the Mazda six has all the business like right there and the rest is plain. That's why I like the front end so much. I like the new grill because this is a 2018, so it's a pretty big refresh for them. I liked what they did with the grill. I think it looks more aggressive and also at the same time, slightly more luxurious. Okay, so we removed the license plate from this car. Yeah, that was a specific request. Do you know why? <laughs> because, because it looks I so much better. Because I hate the way Mazda cars look with license plates because they put them into the grill. SUVs put them below the grill, so it's fine. And what about the side? If you look at the Alfa Romeo, They've got a similar grill down the middle that they can't put a plate over. That's right. But they, there's a skinnier, so they can put theirs on the side. I don't know how putting plates on the sides works. I, You can put it to the tow hook mount. I just want them to factory make it better somehow. Ontario, make a $5,000 no front license plate tax with all the money from that going towards handicap parking or accessible parking. I also really like the big chin spoiler on the front end of this car. They changed the headlights a little bit. I think they look good. I don't think they look great. Okay, so the chrome doesn't go through the headlights anymore like it did on the Mazda 3. Now it goes kind of around it. Yeah, below. But you've got like the LED outline, but that middle light is always on in the headlights. So it's like, it kind of looks cooler, but it still doesn't look good. I think if they tweak the brightness and when it's on, I think they could be really good headlights. I really like the wheels. Next favorite part. You know why? Mazda 3. Nope. Mazda Speed. Yep, they remind me of Mazda Speed 6 wheels. They look really nice. Anything throwback to fast stuff is always cool. Exactly. Rear end, I think the whole car kind of falls apart there for me. However, bigger exhaust tips this year, thank you. Okay, the best part about the back end is that they got rid of like that little plasticky part and like brought the bumper way lower. Classier, more aggressive. My ideal would be if they had like more of a stocky, almost like the Dodge Charger body panel that kind of came in. I think it needs fatter rear quarters. Yeah, 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 that's what I meant. What about the taillights? Don't really like the taillights, but I will end this off with there is so much trunk room. Yeah, the trunk is huge. Gigantic. And Love you've got it. buttons in the back to drop the seats from the back. And the hinges are also hidden, which is kind of nice. Now we should hit up the interior infotainment and a bunch of other stuff. While I drive. That's right. Now that you're in the driver's seat. Reverse camera. Oh, it's got rear cross traffic alert. It is so pixely and low res and distorted. It looks really bad. But we do have a 360 camera, which is cool. There's something going on with the resolution. It's not very good. Yeah, and then there's lines between every camera because they said they didn't want you to have any blind spots or like fake blind spots with blends, but I don't like it one bit. Yeah. But what I do like is that you do get a mode where you can see how close your tires are to parking spots. That is really cool. That's cool, but in general, I don't like this reverse camera, 360 camera at all. I don't like the quality of it either. Time to start driving. Go forward now. First thing when I got in, very, very, very comfortable seats. After the backup camera? Second thing when I got in was the very comfortable seats. <laughs> the seats are really comfortable. We have Napa leather because this is the signature trim. But you know what's really funny? What? Adjusting the seat. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so the seat controls are on the side, which is very normal, but around the seat controls, gloss black. Piano black. Gloss black is piano black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it. It's exactly where your hands go, so there's fingerprints everywhere. Fingerprints and dust. It's kind of annoying. Speaking of fingerprints and dust, more gloss black in the center console. Speaking of fingerprints and dust in the center console, more gloss black on the side. I don't like it anywhere in any car. But the interior here is very simplistic and it looks very, very cool. It's classy. Overall, I really do like this interior. I do really like the look of this interior and the climate control buttons where they're placed. It's very classy. Yes. Everything's intuitive. 
What I don't like is the infotainment because it's the same Mazda infotainment we've used in every other Mazda. Yep. So if you watch our other videos, you'll know why we don't like it. No rewinding satellite radio, crappy map. The audio quality is decent, but not the best. We got Bose. But we still don't have Android Auto Apple CarPlay. However, we do have an answer for all of you people. Mazda is releasing Android Auto and Apple CarPlay this year, but you have to pay for it. It's gonna come in the newer models, but if you wanna upgrade your system, you're gonna have to pay. Exactly. So all you guys telling us about hacking your systems, just tack them and you get it for free. Maybe hack it. But I, I don't, don't know really that encourage yeah. that. So do if you it, want it, do what you gotta do. Exactly. But I do want to restate that this does have the control wheel and the little volume knob down here. Which is great. You can't use the touchscreen while driving, but the touchscreen can be used while you're sitting still. BMW lets you do both. On the Mercedes that are currently out, you can only use the wheel, so there's no complaints of like touchscreen only while you're sitting still. If you can do both, they should both be active whenever. I agree, and the people that keep commenting on our videos telling us that you can hack it, apparently you can hack it, so there uh, you go. Hack away. Yeah, apparently. You Mazda people really like to hack your cars yeah, for some yeah. reason. No, like, other, no other fan base of a car company wants to hack their cars. Yeah, you guys are about it. every Mazda owner ever. Yeah, that's like the number one comment on any of our Mazda videos is that, oh, I hacked my infotainment. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand, but you guys are about it, so we're just telling you what you tell us, so here you go. Next interior feature, dashboard. I love it. It looks great. We have wood up here, which looks nice. Yes. And then we also have it micro is suede. Authentic sand wood or something like that. Sen wood. Sen wood, yes. That's I right. don't know if that means actual wood or if it's an authentic representation of wood. It's real wood. The wording confuses me, so I don't trust it. Anyways, we have ultra suede, which is really soft. Ultra suede. And I love it because they didn't just put ultra suede on some kind of plastic. It's really soft to touch. And it's brown. Brown seats, brown ultra suede. That's very cool. It is cool. However, I don't like the shade of brown. I think it's too, it's too dark. dark. Yeah. That's my only issue with it, but quality wise, very good. I also like on the interior how the doors blend in with the dashboard a lot more. Yeah, it looks really nice. And I really like how these vents stick out. That's the coolest part, the vents, which is weird to say, but it is very cool. My second favorite thing about the dashboard area is the door handles. It's like a chrome strip that kind of comes right out and it's just like a little stick that sticks out. I think we should hit up the gauges because they're really cool. It's got a seven inch screen built in through the middle. So your tachometer is actually all digital, but from the driver's position, it looks totally normal. Yeah, it looks analog, it's great. And you can put different kind of settings inside the middle with your info button. Very easy to use, very clear, and you have heads up display. Exactly, and thank you Mazda, no more plexiglass thing. It's a real heads up display that's projected onto the windshield, great job. Heated and cooled seats with the perfect controls for them. And a heated steering wheel. Exactly, they're all exactly where you wanted them to be. I got in this car, I said, I wanted cool seats, done. Oh, here's my heated steering wheel, here's my heated seats. Speaking of this interior, the back. Okay, there is a lot of room back there. There is for people like you, me, not so much. It's still okay. Six foot one and a half, six foot. <laughs> Five foot eight foot, and a half. Sorry, way too much credit there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part about the back seat is when you drop down the armrest, there's a cool USB thing in there and cup holders. And heated seats in there. It's very nice. Honestly, the best implementation of that I've seen in a rear center console that isn't some sort of crazy BMW for $200,000. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can agree with that. We've got adaptive cruise. Which is nice. And we've got lane keep assist, which kind of pushes you a little bit, but it's not like super crazy. No, it's very minimal assist. Very, very minimal. You can't rely on it to take corners. How's the actual steering? The steering input and the steering wheel? Steering's good, handling's nice. The steering wheel is the same wheel from the Mazda 3, I believe. No, it's the exact same one from the Mazda 6 previously. Okay, well it feels just like a Mazda 3 steering wheel. It's very similar, very, very similar familiar. button placement. If you like Mazda, you'll love the steering wheel. We should talk about the price. $38,800. Canadian. Obviously we are Canadian. So that's right in the ballpark of the Accord and the Camry, right? Exactly. I think this one drives the best. So in this segment, if you're looking for the best driving experience, I think this is the one. However, we are driving the Subaru Legacy and the Ford Fusion Sport in the next couple weeks. So we got more stuff to add to the mix. Exactly. So of the Camry, Accord, and the Mazda 6, which one would you take? That's really hard to pick. I think this one drives the best out of all of those. It's very close to the Accord in driving experience, but I think it's a notch above. I think I would take the Camry. Why? 20 rewinding satellite radio stations instead of the Accord's 12. The Accord does have Android Auto Apple CarPlay. Yeah, but if I'm using Apple CarPlay, then what I'm gonna use? Apple Maps, like there's no point. I might yeah, as well you're be gonna using, get lost. Might as well be using this. Exactly. Let us know which one you pick in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and patreon.com slash the straight pipes. We got a merch store with shirts, and we have the Twitter. Yeah, that, Twitter. Twitter. 
see you later. Bye. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that. A Accord 2 liter turbo, 6 speed versus this exact thing right here in this color. A Accord 2 liter turbo because it's a 6 speed manual. Well, you just made your decision for yourself. But am I going to buy it? No, I don't have the money no, to buy I said, it. That's pick. why. I said pick between and you made your answer. All right, fair enough. Don't forget to subscribe. I know this is after the intro song, outro song. Hit the notification bell, hit it again, but don't unhit it. Just make sure you hit it if you didn't hit it the first time. Are we doing a double subscription break? I guess. Patreon. Patreon notification. subscription break. We got the Twitter and we have shirts. Oh, the share, so the share subscription break. Share subscription break. Share this video. I'm sorry you watched this far. I can't believe you did. I don't really don't think you did. Comment, say one, two, three, five if you did in the comments. Skip four. People are probably like, the outro's here, but there's so much timeline left. Yeah, I wonder what's gonna happen. It's really not gonna work well. We gotta our... cut these cameras, we're gonna keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the audio's still recording. Cut it.